So in the stereo net, we have four elements that we can plot. We're going to focus on the plane element today. So we click into this. We can see we've got a line that's been drawn on the stereo net and we can control two elements. We can control the strike, which is the, the orientation alignment and the dip. So if we have a plane that has an alignment of 10 degrees, we can type in 10 degrees here and we can see that the green line has shifted down to the 010 marker on the outside of the circle. And say, for example, that plane had a dip of 45 degrees. We can pop 45 degrees in here. And again, we can see now that the line has a degree of curvature to it, to um, the effect of 45 degrees on this axis here. Now, we mentioned before that the dip was measured along the west-east axis. Indeed, if we pull the great circle back up to a north-south alignment, we can see that this does in fact fall on the 45 degree marker along this axis. So we'll just return that to 10 degrees. So if I drag the scene so that we can see the plane in 3D, we can see that it makes a lot of sense now from the two-dimensional um, graph that we've plotted the plane in three dimensions, we can really see that that plane does in actual fact dip at 45 degrees. If we align it like that, we can sort of, we can see that slope and the compass bearing of 0, 1, 0 is slightly easier to see there as well. And so we can see that it's a, a solid plane that's dipping off to the east. But this is still relatively hypothetical. So let's apply that one. And now let's move into the Geology Explorer to have a look at what this plane might represent. One of the most basic planes that we measure in geology is the surface that represents a contact between two lithologies or rock types. So let's have a look at how we can create this invisible geology. So I'm just going to make this quite simple and add just two beds. I'm also going to bring these beds up to the top of the model. So here we can see a very simple layering and the bedding contact between these beds is horizontal. If we align the model to the camera angle, we can see that it's perfectly horizontal. If the top of the model represented ground surface in real life terms, then we wouldn't even see this contact as it would be buried. So let's add a tilt event to this and see the effect that that has. So now we can see that the bedding units have been dipped by about 45 degrees in terms of the alignment, it's aligned north-south by default, and these beds are dipping off to the west. So this isn't quite like the plane that we created in um, stereo nets. So how do we uh, replicate that plane? Well, we need to adjust the direction of the, the, the beds are dipping in. So we can grab the green arrow and circle it right around, and we can roughly pick the 010 direction for the beds, right? So that's roughly maybe a little bit more than 010. And when we drag the scene, we can now see that the beds are dipping off towards the east. So let's apply that. Now, in reality, it's very unlikely that we're going to have such a smooth, flat surface for us to walk along with um, uh, the exposure. And even if we did, it's very difficult to measure this dipping angle from the top down. Um, but luckily, you know, weathering and erosion events create different topographies. And so by using a topography like a ridge or a valley, we can begin to see where we might expect to be able to take these measurements um, 
of the bedding contact in real world scenarios. So, for example, if you were a geologist walking down through this um, depression and back up the, to the top of the ridge, you might get some exposure along this bedding contact and you might be able to get a sense of the, um, the contact plane and be able to take some measurements. And so that's what we do in reality.